Jeffrey Nero Hardy was born in Cameron, North Carolina in 1977. From a young age, Hardy had a love for action, as he took part in extreme sports like football and motocross, but it was wrestling that quickly captured his attention. Jeff grew up watching WWE, with his favorite wrestlers being The Ultimate Warrior, Hulk Hogan, and Shawn Michaels. Jeff's childhood sadly wasn't all good though. He and his brother Matt lost their mother to brain cancer when Jeff was only 9 years old. This didn't stop them from pursuing their passion though, and the Hardy brothers began wrestling in their backyard and even held their own shows. As they grew up, the Hardys learned more and more and started wrestling for small companies around their area. Thanks to a combination of their hard work, some people they knew, a bit of luck, and a little lying, Jeff Hardy was given a huge opportunity. WWE was hosting a show in Ohio and they needed an opponent for Razor Ramon. Ramon's original opponent backed out on short notice and a 16 year old Jeff Hardy was asked to fill in. Hardy agreed, but claimed he was 18. Under the impression that he was an adult, WWE let Jeff Hardy compete, leading to Hardy's first WWE match. In the main event of Raw, Jeff Hardy, wrestling under the name Keith Davis, took on future Hall of Famer Razor Ramon. The match began with Razor kicking Hardy in the gut and backing him into the corner. Ramon then whipped Hardy across the ring, and while Jeff tried to make a comeback, the charismatic enigma was no match for the bad guy's strength. Razor Ramon then started stretching the young Hardy and wasn't taking the match too seriously. Razor even lifted Jeff by his pants and started attacking him in the corner. An elbow to the face sent Hardy back to the mat, and the bad guy followed that up by slamming his opponent into the turnbuckle. Jeff's lifeless body was then hoisted up to the top and sent crashing down with a belly to back suplex. Finally, Ramon signaled for the razor's edge and planted the 16 year old wrestler on the canvas and ended the match. The backstory of how Jeff Hardy got put into this match is a lot more interesting than the match itself. It was a squash, which can be fun, but this is just dull. There was a lot of time spent with Razor Ramon just taunting Jeff Hardy, and it wasn't that interesting. But imagine telling fans in 1994 that this Keith Davis guy would eventually become one of the most popular WWE wrestlers of all time. We got a little ways to go before that, however. After his WWE debut, Jeff Hardy would spend the next few years doing more of the same. He was used as an enhancement talent and would lose to more established stars. Jeff's brother Matt was doing a very similar thing at the time as well. It wouldn't be until 1996 that the Hardys would start tagging together in WWE. They still lost most of the time and were used to make other people look good. Finally, after about 5 years, both Jeff and Matt would be given a chance. In 1999, the brothers were given a new look, as well as a manager, former Freebird member Michael Hayes. The Hardys finally started to pick up some victories and began an iconic rivalry with a group called The Brood, which consisted of Edge, Christian, and Gangrel. Things got even better when the Hardys captured the tag team titles by defeating the Acolytes in July 1999. While they dropped the belts back to Bradshaw and Farouk a month later, it was an encouraging start. Eventually, Jeff and Matt got rid of Michael Hayes and joined forces with their former enemy, Gangrel, and they started calling themselves the New Brood. It was a short-lived group though, as the Hardys had their eyes on someone else to guide their careers. They soon engaged in a classic feud with Edge and Christian over the managerial services of Terry Reynolds. The Hardys came out on the winning side of that battle and continued dominating the tag team division, now as Terry by their side. That was until she turned on Jeff and Matt and joined Edge and Christian. It was probably for the best, as this opened the door for Lita to join the Hardys, and together they became known as Team Extreme. Now with Lita by their side, the Hardys continued to put on spectacular matches, with stellar showings at SummerSlam 2000 in the first ever TLC match, and an all-time classic at WrestleMania 17 against Edge and Christian and the Dudley Boys. During these brutal matches, Jeff became increasingly known for his high-risk moves, and fans loved him because of it. After spending about two years teaming with his brother, Jeff was given a shot as a singles wrestler in 2001. He quickly became a fan favorite as well as a title holder when he defeated Triple H for the Intercontinental Championship. Unfortunately though, he lost it right back to the game just a few days later. Luckily, Jeff Hardy picked himself up and captured the hardcore title for Mike Awesome and battled Rob Van Dam in a series of memorable matches. During all of this, Jeff and Matt were still a tag team, but signs of tension began to appear. This caused them to fight each other at Vengeance 2001 with Lita as the guest referee. Jeff picked up the win after hitting the Swanton Bomb, but this storyline was poorly received by fans. WWE ended up dropping it and Team Extreme was back together. Unfortunately for the brothers, their next opponent was the next big thing, Brock Lesnar, 
who had recently debuted. Things didn't go so well for the two, as Brock dominated the majority of the feud, including beating them in a match where Lesnar had Paul Heyman as his tag team partner. After the storyline wrapped up, it was time for the Hardys to officially split. Matt became part of the SmackDown roster, while Jeff would stay on Raw. The charismatic Enigma saw initial success after winning the European Championship from William Regal and found himself featured in prominent matches on Raw. One of the defining moments of Hardy's career, though, was when he took on The Undertaker in a ladder match for the WWE title. Jeff showed a ton of heart and came close to capturing the championship. Undertaker did retain his title, but Jeff Hardy had earned the dead man's respect in an all-time classic Raw moment. Things were looking pretty good for Jeff, but in January 2003, we would see Hardy become a bad guy. He attacked Rob Van Dam and Shawn Michaels, but this run as a villain only lasted about a month before Hardy was back to being a good guy again. Sadly though, in April 2003, Jeff Hardy was released from his WWE contract. The reasons given were no showing events, drug use, and that Jeff refused to go to rehab. Hardy would spend the next few years competing on the independent scene and later joining an upstart wrestling company called TNA. Unfortunately, controversy continued to follow Jeff as he no shown a couple of TNA events and was suspended and eventually released in 2006. While the TNA door was shut, the WWE's door was open once again, and in August 2006, Jeff Hardy returned to the company. He began feuding with the Intercontinental Champion, Johnny Nitro, and while things didn't work out at first, Jeff did eventually defeat Nitro and win the title. This rivalry evolved into a tag team feud as Nitro got his partner, Joey Mercury, involved while Hardy reunited with his brother, Matt. The teams faced off several times between 2006 and 2007, with the Hardys coming out on top in most of their matches. Unfortunately, Jeff Hardy's singles career would suffer, as he lost the Intercontinental title to Omaga in February 2007. But things quickly turned around for Jeff when he and Matt defeated four other teams to become the World Tag Team Champions. Their main rivalry as champions was with Lance Cade and Trevor Murdoch. The Hardys defeated the two on a couple of occasions, only to lose the titles to them on Raw in June 2007. While the Hardys were still together, Jeff Hardy began to focus again on his singles career. He reignited his rivalry with Umaga, who was still Intercontinental Champion. This time, Hardy defeated the Samoan Bulldozer and once again became IC Champion. But this is only the start of something bigger for Jeff Hardy. He began being put in bigger matches and didn't crumble in defeat. This earned him a number one contenders match for the WWE title at the Armageddon pay-per-view. Jeff Hardy's opponent was Triple H, and while the odds were not in Jeff's favor, he pulled off a big upset and defeated the game. This meant that Jeff would face the WWE Champion Randy Orton at the 2008 Royal Rumble for the title. The Viper decided to make it personal and brutally attacked Matt Hardy. Sadly, Jeff Hardy was unable to get his revenge and lost to Orton at the Rumble. To make matters worse, a couple of months later, Jeff Hardy not only lost the Intercontinental Championship, but would also be suspended for 60 days due to him failing a drug test. It seemed like Jeff Hardy's career had nosedived, and it did. But like a phoenix, Jeff came back stronger than ever. Once he returned, the charismatic Enigma feuded with his former rival, Umaga, and defeated him in an awesome Falls Count Anywhere match. Jeff was then sent to SmackDown, where he'd be a contender for the WWE Championship. For the rest of 2008, Hardy would try and try to win the title, but came up short each and every time. It seemed like Jeff Hardy was just never meant to be a world champion. At the 2008 Armageddon pay-per-view, Hardy got one more shot at the WWE title. He was part of a triple threat match involving the champion, Edge, and Triple H, and then it finally happened. Jeff hit the Swanton Bomb, got the 1-2-3, and won. Jeff Hardy had finally made it to the top and became WWE Champion. It was a fantastic moment and solidified Jeff Hardy as a top star. Hardy's first title offense was against the former champion Edge at the 2009 Royal Rumble. During the match, Matt Hardy came out to help his brother, only for Matt to shockingly betray Jeff and cost him the title. After many personal attacks, Jeff Hardy finally agreed to fight his brother. The Hardys fought each other at WrestleMania 25, where Jeff Hardy actually lost. Matt Hardy would also defeat him in a stretcher match as well. Finally, Jeff got his revenge at Backlash when he defeated Matt in an I Quit match. With that rivalry behind him, Jeff was right back in the title scene. On an episode of SmackDown, he defeated three other men to become the number one contender for Edge's World Heavyweight Championship. The two longtime rivals squared off at Judgment Day, but interference from Matt Hardy cost Jeff his golden opportunity. Jeff Hardy thankfully got one more shot at Extreme Rules and finally picked up the big victory and became World Heavyweight Champion. However, this title reign was very short, as CM Punk used his Money in the Bank contract and defeated Jeff to win the world title. As you've learned, Jeff Hardy is resilient, and Hardy picked himself up and defeated CM Punk at Night of Champions to win back the gold. 
For whatever reason, Jeff Hardy and World Championships do not mix, and at the next pay-per-view, SummerSlam, CM Punk defeated Hardy, and Jeff lost the belt again. Hardy got his rematch on the following episode of SmackDown in a steel cage match. The fight had a special stipulation that the loser would leave WWE. In a heartbreaking moment, Jeff lost the match and was forced to say goodbye. In real life, the reason for this was to give Hardy time off to heal his body. However, like in the storyline, Jeff Hardy really did not have a contract with WWE. This resulted in Hardy returning to TNA in 2010. For seven years, Jeff was one of the top stars in the company, winning their world title on three different occasions and often being featured in major storylines. Of course, it wasn't all highlights for the charismatic Enigma, as he continued to battle drug and alcohol issues and infamously ruined the main event of Victory Road 2011. TNA didn't give up on him though, and Jeff eventually reunited with his brother and later feuded with them when Matt became Broken Matt Hardy. Both Jeff and Matt's TNA contracts eventually expired in early 2017. Just like the last time, WWE welcomed Jeff and his brother back and they made a surprise return at WrestleMania 33. They competed against three other teams for the Raw Tag Team Championship. It was also a ladder match, so the Hardys were legally required to win. Jeff and Matt continued to ride the momentum for the next few months, defending and retaining their titles on several occasions. However, all championship reigns come to an end, and at Extreme Rules, so did the Hardys. Afterward, Jeff Hardy would explore his singles career and even became the number one contender for the Intercontinental Championship, but was unsuccessful in his title match. Sadly, Jeff Hardy would suffer a shoulder injury and needed several months off to recover. The charismatic Enigma finally returned in April 2018 and soon defeated the United States Champion, Jinder Mahal, and won the title. Hardy had a solid run at the belt, holding it for exactly 90 days. He lost the US Championship to Shinsuke Nakamura, and to throw salt into the wound, Randy Orton came out afterward and low blowed Hardy. The Viper and the Charismatic Enigma would feud for the next couple of months, ultimately leading to a Hell in a Cell match that Jeff Hardy lost. The next few months would be pretty uneventful for Jeff. He would compete in big matches like the World Cup Tournament, the Royal Rumble, and the Elimination Chamber, but didn't win any of them. However, in February 2019, Matt Hardy made his WWE return and reunited with Jeff. Then, in April, the Hardy brothers defeated the Usos to win the SmackDown Tag Team Championship. As we know, however, Jeff Hardy has the worst luck with title reigns. 21 days after winning the tag team belts, the Hardys had to vacate them due to Jeff getting injured. It would be almost an entire year before fans saw Jeff Hardy again. In March 2020, Jeff made his return on SmackDown, but unfortunately, the pandemic era had just begun. Things got back on track when Hardy began a feud with Sheamus. It started when the Celtic Warrior mocked Jeff for his history of addiction problems. This ultimately led to, ironically, a bar fight, which Jeff Hardy won. Hardy's next feud was with the Intercontinental Champion AJ Styles after Jeff issued a challenge to AJ. A week later, Jeff Hardy beat Styles and was once again IC Champion. Jeff would rather, ironically, lose the belt in a ladder match involving AJ Styles and Sami Zayn. Soon after, Jeff Hardy would be sent to Raw as part of the 2020 draft. He began a feud with Elias that ran through the rest of the year that Hardy more or less won. In 2021, while Jeff was still popular with fans, he began losing quite a bit. It was mainly used to put over newer stars like Damian Priest and Karrion Cross. Ironically, this is exactly what Jeff Hardy was doing as a teenager in the mid-90s. In October, Jeff got a new start when he was moved over to SmackDown. Things started out pretty good for Jeff Hardy, as he won his first two matches on the brand and was part of Team SmackDown at Survivor Series. Everything seemed to be going fine, but little did we know that Jeff Hardy was about to leave WWE. On the November 26, 2021 episode of SmackDown, Jeff Hardy would compete in his final two WWE matches. The first match of the night was a tag team contest, which saw Hardy and Drew McIntyre defeat Happy Corbin and Madcap Moss. The charismatic Enigma even got the pin for his team. Later that night, an 18-man battle royal was set up, with the winner becoming the number one contender for the Universal Championship. Jeff Hardy was one of the participants, and not even he knew that this would be his last WWE match. Before the battle royal actually got started, Jeff's former tag team partner, Drew McIntyre, ran into the ring with his sword. Luckily, all it took was a commercial break, and when we came back, McIntyre was gone. Now that the battle royal was underway, Jeff Hardy's first target was Mad Cat Moss. Jeff, who had changed his attire and gotten rid of his face paint, tried to eliminate Moss, but got attacked from behind by Rich Holland. Hardy then formed an alliance with Mansoor, but Holland overpowered both of them. After recovering, Jeff saw an opportunity and took it, and made the first elimination by pushing Jinder Mahal out of the ring. There was no rest for Jeff, as Shanky started shoving his massive boot into Hardy's throat. 
the charismatic Enigma stayed close to the ground until he found an opportunity to get back at Shanky. Jeff wasn't able to do much damage though, as Madcap Moss returned and began attacking Hardy. Moss even tried to eliminate Jeff, but thanks to the chaos, Jeff Hardy was able to get away. Hardy then laid low for a bit, but when he got to his feet, his old rival, Seamus, went after him. In a moment of pure luck, the Celtic warrior abruptly left Jeff Hardy and focused his attention on someone else. Jeff Hardy went back to the ground and it became clear that he was hurt, likely due to having wrestled already. However, after returning from a commercial break, Jeff Hardy was not only on his feet, but he was inches away from eliminating Sheamus. Unfortunately, the Celtic warrior got the better of Jeff and Hardy fell back onto the mat. Unfortunately, Happy Corbin saw that Jeff was wounded and decided to try and eliminate him. Even though he was hurt, Jeff managed to stun Corbin just long enough to get back inside the ring. Hardy tried to go on the offensive and take out Ricochet, but that didn't go too well. With the battle royal coming to an end, the action started getting more intense, but Jeff Hardy couldn't do much. Realizing that it was do or die, Jeff Hardy had a burst of adrenaline and ambushed Happy Corbin and Sheamus. Hardy hit Sheamus with a whisper in the wind and Corbin with a twist of fate. Corbin then suddenly pulled a fast one and eliminated Sheamus, which allowed Jeff to eliminate Happy and it appeared he won the battle royal. As Jeff Hardy was celebrating, Sami Zayn, who hadn't been eliminated, ran in and knocked Jeff out of the ring. Kind of a disappointing way to end the match, but considering the way the storyline went with Sami Zayn, I think it worked fine. Talking about Jeff Hardy's last match though, it made sense that Hardy didn't do much considering he had already wrestled, but I think it would have been better if he played a more active role. The way the match was played out, Jeff Hardy just felt like another body in the ring, and I was honestly surprised that he lasted till the very end. The commentators didn't even acknowledge when Jeff Hardy eliminated Jinder Mahal, which only adds to this feeling that Hardy wasn't really a big part of the Battle Royal. At the very least, it was cool that Jeff Hardy had his last match in front of his home state of North Carolina. About a week after his match on SmackDown, Jeff Hardy would wrestle at a non-televised WWE event in Texas. Before I go on, I know what you're thinking. Wouldn't this be Jeff Hardy's last match? Fair point, but on Bell to Bell, we only look at wrestlers matches on TV. With that cleared up, Hardy was wrestling a 3 on 3 tag team match at the Texas show. In a very bizarre moment, Jeff Hardy just randomly left the ring and started walking through the crowd. This wasn't part of the show, and it made people wonder if Hardy was under the influence. So far, there hasn't been anything to suggest that Jeff was, but there still isn't any explanation why he up and left the match. Either way, WWE sent Jeff Hardy home following the incident, and shortly thereafter, they would release him from his contract. As of right now, Jeff Hardy is under a no-compete clause, which will expire in March 2022. While we wait for that, check out the first and last matches of the man who puts the high in high-flying, Rob Van Dam.